Hello, how are you beauties? When you join and pop on, say hello. I hope you are doing amazing on, I think today's Tuesday or Wednesday, forget, hopefully one of the days. I know it's the 7th of October. <laughs> I don't know what day it is though. Um, so anyway, when you join, say hello. If you're watching this on the replay, hashtag replay, please let me know. Hey, Teresa where you are tuning in from. I always love knowing no matter what, where you are. Um, and if it's the first time connecting with me, always say hello. If you're returning, always say hello because I just love knowing. Um, but today is super exciting. Today is day seven out of the 31 day live that I'm doing in October. And so uh, why I'm doing this live is we had the launch of my third book. We were seeing the front cover, which I did. It's called An Uncompromised Life. And this is a beautiful story of how I compromised my character, uh, my desires and my needs for love. And in that story, I had a miraculous opportunity where God allowed me to have an unplanned pregnancy. I didn't know this was possible because I had cancer at age 14 and I was told by Western medicine that it'd be very challenging. And I chose to let the child go but the name Ella was revealed to me through three different mediums in the universe and I always knew I was going to adopt the child so I know that the story was the missing piece of the, the child I always knew I was going to adopt and so I get to wait uh, for my alignment to happen and for this to be brought into my reality. And so when you watch this and if you share this live uh, for any of the 31 days, any of the lives, you get entered into a drawing. And October 31st, we pull your name out of a drawing. And what you get is a signed copy of my first book, Live Your Truth, my Oracle deck, The Magical Creatures, Combining Business and Spirituality, a signed copy of my third book. And then the first name gets two one-on-one -on -one calls with me, and the second two people get one one-on-one -on -one call with me. So make sure you share it on your story or on Facebook, share it out, and you get entered to win. Just tag us so we know. And today, the topic that we're talking about with this whole thing is 31 ways that I experienced heartbreak and 31 ways I turned it into a great love story. So today, specifically on day seven, I'm talking about spiritual codependency. And this is a major, major, major one um, that I want to speak on because a lot of people have no idea, if you're like me, what codependency is. Like you hear the word codependency and you think like, okay, like an addict is codependent on alcoholism or um like an addict or like people are addicted to shopping like you think people are codependent to things but a real real thing and this really goes back to for me mother-daughter relationship or for any of us it really goes back to the relationship we had with our family and what was it that our parents needed from us what was the coding they put it on us did they really have us because they needed a helpline they needed a lifeline or did they have us because they were whole and healed people and were ready to bring an emotionally intelligent, creative being into the world? <laughs> Most parents, they were like probably the first one, or you might be a parent that lis that's listening and being like, shit, I might be that, which is totally fine, no judgment. But a spiritual codependent is basically when we feel like we're spiritual, we are spiritual, we believe there's God in the universe, but we believe by showing up and helping other people, loving other people, answering the phone when we're about to hop in the shower, answering the phone when we're about to hop in a bath, when we're like responding to text messages like crazy, we feel like we have a million things that we need to do for everybody else that we don't ever carve out time for ourselves. And the reason that is a spiritual codependent is because we think that we're using our gifts to fulfill soul contracts or to fulfill our purpose by giving ourselves away to everyone where we don't have to take responsibility to look at ourselves and take responsibility for ourselves and love ourselves and what's really going on here this is the spiritual codependent part but the psychology part my academia part because i like both is what's really going on is that we feel validated we feel loved and we feel needed by when we give ourselves to others and when we give ourselves to others we feel like we're doing them a favor, but really it's for our own validation and needs. And so there's kind of this unaware selfishness going on, this unaware neediness, and this unaware of how to source our own love, how to, how to become our own love story, how to, how to express to ourselves what we really desire. And in this process, we become a codependent because we, 
literally do everything to avoid ourselves. We scroll, we read books, we go on walks, like we do everything we can possible to avoid who it is we really are and to avoid spending time with ourselves. Because we think when we do that, we're doing everyone else a favor and everyone else is gonna like us and we like everyone calling us for all their problems because we're like, we fix so many problems. And like, we're at home at night and we're maybe talking to a partner or God or whoever it is and being like, fuck, like I'm exhausted, this is annoying, these people always call me with problems. But there's a deep rooted need that we actually need, needed, I shouldn't say need, I used to need people to call me for that. I used to need that for me to like feel validated, for me to feel like, I was worth something. And if I didn't have people calling me or texting me with their problems, I didn't feel like I was validated. And this created a huge, huge, huge problem in my whole life. Um, and that's really what ended up with me attracting narcissist mentors, narcissist relationships. That's what attracted many unhealthy friendships in my life. It's what attracted um, unhealthy clients. Like there was a lot of things that I was, I was doing in this space because we think we're just doing it unconsciously, but besides just our conscious body, there's a world of energy and there's an unconscious world, right? There's a world of, we can't tangibly see, some of us can see it clairvoyant, but our, our clear audience, but you can see it and hear it, but it's not normally on the physical plane. And so the longer that we allow ourselves to act in these unconscious ways where we answer the phone we need to be talking to God where we um, don't do the things that we said we were gonna do we don't follow through on our obligations for ourselves and we go out to dinner with the person or we get distracted or whatever that is that is us activating our spiritual codependent anytime we say words like I feel bad I should of um, I need to do this for those those wordings those are huge key triggers and activations that you are in that moment acting out of spiritual codependency. And this is something that it's taken me a while to integrate and it doesn't happen overnight. So catch yourself, start noticing how you communicate. Let's say if you leave the office or you're with your boss or you're with a friend and you're saying, I feel like I should do this or um, I need to do this because or whatever that it is, like all these different things that you, you're saying or I... I, I mm, uh, what, all these different things like that. I should have, I need to, I feel bad. Any of those and you catch yourself saying it, realize that you are in that moment acting out of spiritual codependency and flip it. I don't feel bad. I feel great for choosing myself. I feel great for putting myself first. I feel great that I might be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad and I'm telling people that I need a night out for dinner by myself or I need a date night or um, I'm telling my kid I need 30 minutes for whatever it is, or I'm telling my boss that I need to take this half day Friday off because I'm overwhelmed. Like say those things instead of feeling bad about what your needs and desires are, because when we feel bad and we can't communicate and trust me, I know what it feels like to be like, I have to say something, but I can't physically say it. Like, I know what that feels like, but you've got to get in the practice of saying it or you will cause disease, disease of people pleasing, which over time, there will be disease that arises in your body. Mine was an unplanned pregnancy. I mean, I've had anxiety and depression, every PTSD and other things, but the biggest one was this unplanned with an unhealthy relationship. And it was really what initiated my journey to overcome this. But I wanna share through my story, like allow you to reflect and look at your own life and ask yourself where you may be functioning like that, where you uh, may be having those things arise. And for you just to be like, remember what that girl said? Like, remember what that, that Colleen said? Like, you know, I shouldn't be saying this, so let me practice. I feel like I need to do this. Okay, what do I feel like I want to do for myself? What do I feel like I out of pure desire? And, and shift that language. And that's gonna really, really assist you as you practice it, because this is a practice. There's still things in my coding where sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to, or I should do that, but I'm like, oh, just caught myself, and I don't act on it anymore. Before, I wouldn't even hear the voice. I would override the voice. I would do it even though my body, um, even though my body would be like, oh, um, I, f I should uh, call this person back, or I should text them, or I should do this. Like, if I'm, if I'm saying that, and I'm like, oh, my body's tense. Like I should, but it doesn't feel right. I'm doing it to please someone or I'm doing it to, you wouldn't know you're consciously doing this, but you're doing it to get validation. Like there's an uneasiness of, oh, I should do that, but you're tense in it. That is a spiritual codependent looping, coding, asking to be released. And so my prayer for you is that when you catch yourself doing this, 
switch it into what do I need to do for me? What feels good in my body? What opens me up? And in that, in that process of mm, codependency of I, if I don't answer the phone, I feel so bad because I feel this person might hate me if I don't get their text message in 30 minutes. <sighs> Breathe it through. I'm not gonna respond to the text message. I'm gonna put up my hand on my heart. I know that I'm totally safe. I'm totally cool to do what's meant to do for me. I'm moving through this. I'm breathing. I'm recoding my system. I'm recoding my DNA and everything is gonna be okay because I'm choosing myself first. And when we practice that over and over as a practice, I promise you, your life will shift. It's no longer feeling like you're a spiritual codependent, no longer uh, attracting trauma, attracting negative people, attracting unhealthy relationships. You will, you will really be the embodiment of where your soul can drop in so you can truly express uh, the energy of you and attract that true energy back instead of a diluted or taken over uh, energy that's gotten into your system. And so anyway, this is a huge, I have a whole chapter on this in my third book. So um, if you have any questions, you're watching something replay, feel, frag, yeah, feel free to do, um, ask them. I'll get back to them in the comments. And then three things I wanna share with you is that one, um, when you're hearing this and you're like, Colleen, I really, really wanna go deeper on this, please pre-order my book, An Uncompromised Life. I promise you this book changed my life. It will absolutely change your life. It was my initiation into motherhood. It's the initiation into overcoming spiritual codependency. It's my initiation into groundedness. It's my initiation into safety. It was my initiation into embodiment, really. And I know that it can be this way for you. So message me to get the link for that. So you get a signed copy from me. You get our Christella crystal um, and a handwritten channeled note from Ella and myself. Um, two, uh, we have a free community. So if you want to go deeper into this and be part of these conversations after these 31 days, definitely message me to get in that community because after these 31 days are over, we're taking, we have one week, we're going to take out all 31 lives that I've done in October and it's going to be a paid program that goes with the book. So definitely make sure you're watching them, share them, um, while they're still up, um, and get in part of the free community. So you have it. And number three is if this is something you're like, Colleen, I'm really going through some stuff. I feel like this is things I'm, I'm ready to overcome. I'm ready for this initiation to be this bright light to stop anything unhealthy. Definitely message me because for October, I'm offering four calls that you get with me for the rest of the year. And it's $1,495. We do have a payment plan. So that way it's totally affordable. I know with COVID, I want to make sure that's available. Um, but usually that's a $5,000. So we're making it super, super affordable, super easy. So I want to make sure that you can do it. So message me and we'll send you the link for that. And lastly, again, sharing this, you'll get entered to win the free drawing at the end of the month for the two books that are signed copies, um, the Oracle cards, and then two calls with me or one call with me. So I love you all so much. I want you to know, I'm going to come really close to the end of this. I want you to know if you're watching this, you are so close to overcoming your heartbreak. You are so close to overcoming trauma. You are so close to beating spiritual codependency and you are absolutely meant to fall in love with the world. You are meant to fall in love with yourself. You deserve to fall in love and you deserve to be the greatest love story of your entire life. I love you and I'm super excited for you to message me to get the pre-order of the book, the community, our one-on-one calls.